myself, Sai Prasad, Alex Vain, Ahlabad High School and the Junior College. Welcome to the series of the lectures of Intermediate First Year Chemistry. We have been discussing the different concepts of atomic structure. We have started with the basic subatomic particles, uh, we have continued with the different models of atom that is we have started with the models of uh, uh, Thomson model, Rutherford model and Bohr's atomic model. After that today we are going to discuss the different uh, properties such as uh, we have been discussing uh, the basic things such as photoelectric effect, right, dual nature, electromagnetic nature, right. Today we are going to observe the main concept that is uh, its radiation frequencies uh, spectrum. What actually a spectrum mean? We have discussed that uh, each and every electron or whatever the element it radiates or whatever the particle it radiates electromagnetic waves, right. Uh, based on its state, it will radiate different kinds of energies that is different energies of different frequencies, right. That energy of uh, frequencies is always within a fixed frequencies of range that is uh, the Vibgeor range, right. We have discussed in our previous classes that is it always uh, distributes in a fixed spectrum, right. What actually a spectrum is? A spectrum is a band of frequencies together is called a spectrum that is what we know and after that what is a continuous spectrum? A continuous spectrum is a band of frequencies that is uh, we know that the frequencies are always in the range of a uh, fixed limit that is from the starting from the violet range to the red right that is a Vibgeor uh, kind of uh, spectrum is not it? That continuous uh, kind of uh, whole frequencies is called as continuous spectrum is it okay and the next is a emission spectrum. What is an emission spectrum? What is an absorption spectrum? That is uh, an emission spectrum is uh, the set of frequencies when an electron uh, emits energy, right? Which means the frequencies uh, in which the electron releases the energy that is emission spectrum. What about absorption, right? Whenever the electron or some particle uh, accepts some energy or absorbs some energy that particular frequencies of energies are called as absorption spectrum, is not it? And the next is line spectrum. What actually a line spectrum is? See here, there are few particles which does not radiate or which does not absorb in a particular frequency. What kind of frequencies are those, right? At those particular frequencies, the whole spectrum will give a bad, uh, black kind of uh, frequencies, which means it will have a one or two frequencies left in between that is those frequencies or those frequencies are called as line frequency and the set of those all are called as line spectrum, right. Uh, what is the main interest in the line spectrum? That is a line spectrum consists of one or two frequencies which is actually very important to analyze, which is easy to analyze. That is why there are many, many theories uh, behind this line spectrum, right. That is why most of the scientists they started to uh, experiment on line spectrum of hydrogen. Why only hydrogen? Because hydrogen is one of the most lightest atom. Hydrogen is one of the most lightest atom, is not it? Uh, lightest in the sense it has its atomic number is only one. Uh, practically thinking it has only one electron, one proton kind of thing, right. That is why uh, whenever a energy is given to a hydrogen molecule, it gets dissociated because the each and every atom of hydrogen molecule that is if it is H2, the two atoms of hydrogen molecule they get excited to higher energy levels. What happens when they get excited? When they get excited they start radiating, right? Whatever the energy spectrum it is there, whatever it is there, when it reaches the higher uh, energy level, will it stay there? No, uh, nevertheless an energy I mean the electron or a particle can never stay in the higher energy state, it has to retain back, right. Then in what sort of energy will it radiate, right, is it clear? See here we discuss that whatever energy which is there, it is always released in terms of quanta, it is always quantized that is the Planck's quantum theory, right. Similarly here also the hydrogen whatever it is there. The hydrogen whenever it gets excited by taking lots of energy, it has to come back or it has to get neutralized by releasing its energy, right. See here based on the quantization theory, we can tell that 
the whole energy is released in a discretized way that is uh, it will uh, release in discrete frequencies based on the excitement it has right will it directly come to the neutral state or a uh, ground state right it will release in different different frequencies right based on it there are few scientists who uh, discussed uh, few things that is a balmer is a scientist who tells that the wave number of a frequency of a radiation or a wave number of a radiation is always given by 109677 into 1 by 2 square minus 1 by n square right what is this n n is the number of uh, frequency or the number of energy level from which it has to fall down that is 2 is uh, other than 2 more than it should be more than actually 2 or 3 ok that is n is it clear there is a fixed constant value for most of the atoms right and one more thing is uh, the next scientist was Rydberg he generalizes this equation like he takes n1 and n2 right there is the first energy level and there is the second energy level right based on these things he tells that whatever the uh, whatever the electron or a particle even it jumps to infinity energy level it has to fall down either to 1 2 or among them either it is n3 n4 or kind of thing he divided uh, the whole thing as different different discrete levels right based on this constant he named this constant as Rydberg's constant and this equation is Rydberg's equation right is it clear see here he tells that a Rydberg's equation is valid for different different series that is when an electron or a particle is jumping from higher energy level to if it is n1 he named it as one series if it is n2 he named it as one series if it is n3 n4 n5 he named for the first five energy levels let us see what are those see here there is a hydrogen spectrum these are different different energy levels that is there is a ground level that is the first uh, n equal to 1 2 3 and so on that is an electron can be either excited to higher levels whether it is 2 3 or 4 or whatever right it has to come to the neutral state right that is whatever for example uh, second level to first level that is this or third to first or fourth to first or fifth to first whatever it is if it is coming to the ground I mean n equal to 1 from 2 3 or whatever that series heat they defined it as Lyman series right this kind of frequencies are always in UV spectral region similarly Balmer Balmer region is somewhere from third second third fourth fifth to the second energy level right those all coming to the second energy level this uh, kind of frequency radiation is given by Balmer where they finally come to the second energy level from different higher energy level this frequency is come under visible similarly passion bracket and p fund there are different different kinds of uh, uh, frequency spectral regions and frequencies and the series they name themselves is it clear this is how they define a simple line spectrum of hydrogen ok uh, what are the different theories we discussed before Bohr that is uh, starting from the EM radiation that is dual dual nature of a particle then we have discussed the photoelectric effect Planck's quantum theory kind of uh, different different things now let us start our uh, practical model actually it is the most popular model and it is the most important model that is Bohr model ok. He also described uh, hydrogen atom uh, based on all these uh, conclusions he explains the particle structure of a hydrogen. He takes the basic principle of hydrogen uh, the basis of line spectrum and everything ok. Let us start now see here what is a Bohr's atomic model? Bohr's atomic model uh, you have studied uh, postulates and everything in our previous sections let us have a deep, uh, deep uh, description of uh, what is a Bohr's atomic model based on the concepts which we learned right. Bohr tells that according to him uh, the electrons in an hydrogen atom in a hydrogen atom revolves around nucleus in a 
fixed path, they are called as orbit or shells. Is it clear? Is it right? He tells that uh, an atom is always in a spherical in shape, an atom is always in a spherical in shape and he tells that uh, whatever the electrons are there, they always revolve around this particular nucleus in a fixed path. The electrons revolve in a fixed path, they are called as orbits or shells. Is it clear? The electrons revolve around this nucleus in a fixed path called as orbit or a shell. Right? What is the first point? That is an atom is spherical in shape I, and the electrons revolve around nucleus in a fixed path called as orbits or shells. And one more thing, what are the electrons which are there in the shell? They remain in the same place, right? Until and unless they get energy, they will not move, which means they are fixed in that particular place, right? Can I use the term stationary? Yes, even he tells that as long as the electron is in the same shell, the energy is constant, that is, as long as electron is in the same shell, its energy is constant. That is why those are called as these energy levels or shells called as stationary orbits, stationary orbits or stationary shells. Is it clear? What is my second point? As long as the electron is in the same energy level, its energy is constant. That is why they are called stationary orbits or stationary shells. Is it clear? Whatever it is, if it want to jump from lower energy to higher energy level, what it will become? If it want to jump from lower energy level to higher energy level, that is if it is in the lower energy level, it is very near to the nucleus, which means the nuclear will be attracting it. It needs more energy, right? It needs more energy to get out of that attraction. Is it okay? It may not get out, but it can uh, move away from this nuclear attraction. It needs some energy, which means when electron moves from, when electron jumps from lower to higher energy level, it requires energy, which means when electron jumps from <coughs> lower to higher energy level, it absorbs energy, right. Similarly, when electron jumps from higher energy to lower energy level, what it will become? It has to radiate some of the energy, that is it has to release some of the energy, is it okay? This energy, the, whatever this energy, there is also the point or the part of this, whatever the energy, whether it is absorbed or radiated, it is, it does not take in a continuous manner, it does not happen in continuous manner. How does it happen? It happens in a discrete way, is it clear? How does it happen? Whatever the energy is released from higher energy to lower energy is always given by H nu, right? This is actually called as Bohr's frequency rule. How did he get that? We know that uh, nu is nothing but change in energy by H, right? Then this energy change that is when an electron jumps from higher energy to lower energy level, it has to radiate some energy, right? That energy is always given by H into nu according to our Planck's constant. How does it uh, radiate? It will never radiate in continuous manner. Then how does it radiate? It radiates in a, at a discrete levels, right? It radiates in a quantized manner, right? What are the points? First point is an atom is spherical in shape, electrons revolve around the nucleus in a particular path called as shells or orbits. Since the energy is fixed for it, right, the energy is fixed for that particular orbit or shell, they are called as energy levels, right. As soon as, as long as the electron is in the same energy level, its energy is fixed, 
right that is why they are also called as stationary orbits or stationary shells right and one more thing is when an electron jumps from higher energy to lower energy level it has to radiate some energy and it uh, jumps from lower to higher it has to absorb some energy right from this we can conclude that the electrons which are near to the nucleus will have very less energy right that means most of the energy is always used in maintaining the circular path right if it does not have energy it has to go and uh, I mean it has to go and unite with this positive charge is not it is it clear this electron should have some kind of centripetal force right is it clear some centripetal or centripetal force which uh, combine together to maintain in the circular path is it clear it should have some kind of centrifugal force to move away from the central element is it clear that is why if you observe here he tells that when an electron jumps from higher ion to lower ion it releases energy in terms of h nu right he named it as Bohr's frequency rule right the next is the fourth thing is he tells that electron revolves around the nucleus with an angular momentum of integral multiple of integral multiple momentum of integral multiple of h by 2 pi what is angular momentum that is m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi is it clear see here there is in circular path uh, whatever the uh, particle it is there it should have some momentum to move around something right since it is in circular motion we are measuring the angular momentum right this angular momentum is always and h by 2 pi multiplied by an integer right that is m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi what is this m m is the mass of electron v is the velocity of electron that means the speed at which it is revolving r is the radius of an orbit where it is in this orbit or this orbit or whatever right here n is number of energy level that is nothing but a normal integer 1 2 3 and so on right this have a special significance we, uh, let us discuss in uh, next session and h is a planck's constant which we saw in this uh, planck's quantum theory 2 pi is a normal constant is it clear once again the electron revolves with an angular momentum of integral multiple of h by 2 pi that is given by m v r equal to n h by 2 pi can you understand see here once again let me revise everything a Bohr's atomic model tells that an atom uh, and one more thing remember that he explains everything in terms of a hydrogen atom he is refer uh, he is specifically referring only hydrogen atom is it okay he tells that a hydrogen atom is always in a spherical in shape whatever the electrons are there they are revolving around the nucleus in a particular path that path is called as orbit or a shell right as long as the electron in the same energy level its energy is constant right that is why they are called as stationary orbits or stationary shells ok and one more thing is whenever the electron jumps from higher to lower it radiates some energy and whenever it jumps from lower to higher it absorbs some energy right that energy is released as radiation which is given by e 2 minus e 1 as h nu where e 2 is the higher energy level e 1 is the lower energy level h is Planck's constant and u is the frequency of radiation and it is popularly known as Bohr's frequency rule and the final point is angular momentum of uh, electron is always given by integral multiple of h by 2 pi that is m v r is equal to n into h by 2 pi where m is mass of uh, electron v is velocity of uh, electron at which it is rotating r is radius of a particular orbit n is inti I mean integer h is constant 2 pi is also constant is it clear this n has a particular kind of significance uh, it can also be called as a principal quantum number what is it why it is a principal thing ok there is a basic uh, postulates of Bohr's atomic model uh, let us discuss about a few more constraints and its defects right in our 
next session ok. Is it clear for today what all we discussed in this class? We have started with the basic uh, line spectrum, I mean different kinds of spectrum, what is spectrum, continuous spectrum and everything. Then we discussed what is the line spectrum of hydrogen, we have seen different series, Rydberg's equation, Balmer series, right. After that we started the Bohr's atomic model, we discussed more uh, postulates and everything. Tomorrow we will discuss, I mean in the next session we will discuss few more uh, theoretical concepts of Bohr and we will end up with the uh, uh, defects of this, ok. Is that clear for today? Fine, this is for today. Let us discuss more concepts of atomic structure in our next session, ok. Thank you.